Dane, it's that time. He, well, it doesn't really take a year. I don't know what the exact timeline is, but I want to preface, preface, off to a good start, preface this with a question. Do you ever have things in your house that you put off because you're scared of what might come out of you fixing or remedying a problem? <clears throat> kind of like the finger in the dam metaphor. If you plug one, like another one's going to spring a yeah, leak somewhere or else. Or just like you, you know you've been putting something off for so long that you know that it's going to be a bigger job than it probably should have been in the first place. And your question is to specifically be around the house stuff? Uh, the, around the house. Because this happens to me. This happens to me at work. Like all if you the don't time. clean the gut. Well, yeah, obviously that happens to all of us. But like if you don't clean the gutters for like most of the fall, well, you've got like all the leaves plus the rain plus more leaves plus like a dead varmint in there that lost itself in the leaves, you know. So it's, now it's become like a, a, a search and rescue for the raccoon babies that were that died alongside their mama, you know, that kind of thing. I'm, I'm going to go along and say, yes, that that's happened to me. Thank before. you, buddy. Well, it's reached that time <laughs> for me. I have a shower that is technically my own, even though we all know I don't know the fucking thing in this house or studio. Um, and I have officially started to bathe my feet accidentally in my shower, which means it's time to unclog unclog the drain and i'm you're afraid of what's going to come out i i know it's going to be like a rat king scenario mm -hmm. where i'm just going to like pull like something's ow and then i have to like let go of it and like pull it out again so what i'm saying is do i drain it before and make sure it's dead before i yank it out of there or do you want a live fight i'm i'm, I'm fairly confident there's nothing alive in there you don't know what goes down there, Dan. Some pretty sick shit goes down there. I'm sure there does, but I'm... <laughs> Some of it may I'm, be sentient by now. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's not alive. I haven't that's, heard any voices that's yet. That's just my guess. Just saying, I could it be might wrong. not be cable did you communication. Watch? I did, actually. I like it. It's Thank nice. you, buddy. Show the people. It's this. Now, this. don't be looking at that and thinking, boy, these guys are making too much money because that could not be further or from the truth. Maybe we, maybe we just fake it till we make it. Anyway... I'm probably going to send what's in there off to the nearest research lab to study its effects on the human body. But um, weird question too, like when you unclog your drain, is it, it's always your color of hair, right? Because I, I get weird shit coming out of there and I can't I mean, tell if it's like, I can't that remember, wasn't on my head at some time. I can't remember the last time I unclogged a drain. See? But, See? But, but I lived alone for probably two and a half, three years. See, that's what I'm saying too. So, like on that timeline, yeah. you wouldn't have had to. Right. This has probably been about a three-year clog we're talking about here. So that's what I'm saying. Like three years, a, a human talks in three years. God only knows what that thing's going to be. I might have a little container with like a little lump of something that just kind of listen. I, I listen. If you're genuinely concerned about just bring the about life in the drain, call Elon, get one of his flamethrowers. Drano at first. However, I just will say if you do Drano at first, make sure you wear gloves because you don't want to get that. Shot oh, I'm going to wear your skin. I'm going to wear. Oh, the last time I did it, it it like little tail whipped over the glove and hit my arm. I was like, it's like that Kevin James uh, icky toes. Uh, <laughs> like just the my butthole clenched real tight, like uh, <laughs> death be on me. But anyway. I'm glad to see any, I'm glad to see that you survived that. I haven't event. yet. That's what I'm saying. This no, no, no. When it when it hit you. Oh, you I, barely, that. I barely. I barely. I looked at it with my machete. What was that movie? It, was it 38 Days? No, it was uh Z, World War Z, where she gets bit. And he like chops her arm off real quick so it doesn't spread to her. That's that's almost what I did. But I was like, let's mm. let's see if this. By the way, if you have any thoughts or uh, uh, routines or techniques to unclogging a drain, please send them into W D podcast or just get in the comments. Put in the below. comments. Tell us just, any way you know how to get a hold of us, which we tell you every single podcast. If, how to if get you hold wait us. like one minute, he's gonna give you the whole rundown. It's gonna, gonna be a little longer than a minute, but so I'll try to be brief. Yeah. All right, so the meme <laughs> segment. This I'm excited for these for like to get some real good feedback here. Yeah, um, <laughs> aren't we all? <laughs> can't wait. But okay, it ha if you're in Australia, you have to self designate because I don't know if the plumbing system. I know your flush yours flushes it goes the, backwards. Yeah, yeah, so just 
I'll just flip it and reverse it. Don't, I'll do the hard work. You just put it in. Um, <laughs> all right, the meme destruction. The left still can't meme. What's going on over there? I thought they had all the funny people. I thought they were in Hollywood. I thought, I thought they had all the writers. Well, oh, they're on strike. That yeah. might be it too. I'm sure some, you know, really bright psychologist uh, has probably figured out the pathology that's going on here that makes it impossible for them to to <laughs> meme or do anything culturally relevant that doesn't require, you know, beating their opponents over the head with it. But I don't know. Maybe they should form a union. Maybe. It seems to be working out for them really well. Real, real, real <laughs> great. Real nice and tight. Uh, Culture Corner. The Blue Beetle. Yawn. Who knew blue beetles could be racist? I mean, or no, it's not the beetle. It's it's the the people not showing up to watch the beetle. That's right, of course, because if you don't like a thing for any number of reasons, it's because you're racist. I would have liked that. I I wish I would have come up with that back in like third grade. I know, but like, could have been something. Miss Clifton, if this report doesn't get an A, you're racist. <gasps> oh, you've checkmated me there, David. <laughs> Dipshits. Anyway. <laughs> Epstein didn't kill himself. The Maui Wowie, just with less James Franco. Yeah. Sad, sad times. It's but not Pineapple Express, that's for sure. You'll, you'll be shocked to learn that the government is using the disaster in a, in a way that somehow cr makes the disaster bigger. It's, I, it's crazy, I know. Panama Red. Never anyway. happens. <clears throat> First time in history. I'm sure it'll be the last as well. Mm -hmm. And then the main, Chris Christie is spewing ignorance. That's weird. I thought he liked to shove things into that thing, not vomit dribble out of it. Every once in a while, it goes the opposite way. He well, did in the, in the debate the other night. And I, I thought I would want to see it stop going in so much. But, you know, yeah. to each their own. I would actually prefer more things going in than anything coming out because people lose brain cells every time it does. So. He just loses a... Day of his life, every hoagie fires down. But after that, Dan, you want to get into it? Let's do it. Welcome to Weapons and Meme Destruction Podcast, episode 160, which can be found at wmdpodcast.com backslash 160. You can get the podcast audio only on any podcast catcher. Just search Weapons of Meme Destruction, and you can get the videos on YouTube, Rumble, and Odyssey. David, we're talking left no memeing. Oh, God. And wait a minute. So, so the, meme, prep, the meme is that the, the left can't meme, and we have the next entry into that. We're not destroying a meme on this segment. We are bolstering if, a meme because you, it's true. If you think that we don't sacrifice for you, son, some of bitches, I got a news for you. That was the hardest, gross. That was the most difficult phrasing boom. Yeah, phrasing boom. Um, four minutes that I had to sit through in any of our pre-show like, pre research. I, I apologize for putting you through it. However... In true misery loves company fashion. Yeah, if yeah, I had to sure. suffer through that shit, I need a, com a comrade. It always it always smells less disgusting the second time, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, when the first person is like, <gasps> yeah, like the first time I was I was disgusted, and the second time I was enraged. Two girls, one cup. It's Chocolate. it's always fun when you. Show I never it to watched somebody that else. more than once. One time was enough on that one for me. I never I never did that myself. Good, but I barely made it through the first time without. I, that was foisted upon me, by the way. It was, it was foisted upon all of us. That was the whole point. I think there's some sick sons of bitches that went home and Googled it themselves. I'm, you know, everything on the internet is forever, but I really hope that that thing has actually been you know scrubbed weird? from the internet. Funny, funny little tagline. They were, you know, this guy, they were swollen and puking up a lot of what this guy put out with his little answer to uh, Richmond, north of Richmond. Couldn't have got worse. So, what we're talking about is uh, a guy. I'm not even going to call him Hooping an artist, <laughs> Billy Bragg. Have you had you ever heard of Billy Bragg before this? Billy Bragg here. No, no, I'm, I'm a big Billy Mays fan. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 he, he just got that it. Okay, got it. Well, that was nice. That was well, nice. 
Uh, so anyway, Billy Bragg is apparently a British singer songwriter, and I use both of those terms incredibly loosely. He's British. Um, you couldn't tell. From no, his, from his. I, I was. I was just locked in on the fact that he didn't like hit an Everything actual was note. Shit. Yeah, he was flat the entire time. Now listen, in in true two girls one cup fashion i'm going to put the youtube link for you in the comments if you want to watch this well, four and a half minute abortion of a song um i i i recommend that you don't it's terrible don't give them the the views but if you're a glutton for punishment yeah but david and i we're just gonna break it down for you a little I thought bit you're gonna so. put a put a link in there for the two girls one cup I pro that'd probably be a nice little palate cleanser afterwards <laughs> actually <laughs> definitely put that in there <laughs> Just feel better about yourself. <laughs> so, so Billy Bragg. Uh, you I know, can't not hear it now. All right, I'm gonna Billy quit. Bragg here. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna quit saying his name. Thank you. Uh, he's apparently a British again singer songwriter, and he has, in the course of his shitty career, uh, made several songs, usually from the more left side of the political spectrum, more like, you know, worker solidarity bullshit like that. Anyway, seeing the absolute viral explosion of Richmond north of Richmond, uh, Mr. Bragg could not uh, help himself but uh, write in probably five seconds, because that's about how good it is, um, a, a response song, which he calls quote, rich men earning north of a million. And just based on that title, you can probably imagine that song goes exactly as you expect. And what Bragg proceeds to do throughout the song is uh, chastise Oliver Anthony for not having sufficient solidarity with the working class um, to say that it's only rich men that earn north of a million that are the cause of all of his problems. And don't you know that if you had been paying attention, Oliver Anthony, uh, it wouldn't be those politicians who are the literal definition of a parasite in the sense that they produce nothing of their own and they leech off of all of us, the taxpayers, and enrich themselves and their buddies. They are not the problem, Oliver. It's people that earn north of a million dollars. You uneducated prick, yeah. Oliver. No, no fine distinctions made at all about whether somebody who earned a whole bunch of money got it by being a crony, cuddling up to those politicians, or somebody just started a small business and provided a good or service that people liked so much that they paid that person to continue providing it, and so they made a lot of money. No distinctions made. Just anybody earning north of a million is the problem, according Correct. to Mr. Bragg. And what was the solution that he suggested that Oliver look into? Uh, he says that uh, unions, joining a union, unions... Unionizing and getting better pay fixes everything. The the hook, as you would call it in rap, the refrain, as you'd call it in yes. music or the chorus, in the, it's the it's the repeated line. He says it a lot, a lot. Anyway, go ahead. Um, no, yeah. So obviously, from the leftist bent, right? Uh, he identifies a problem, right? A problem is that people that are of the working class, and this is what Oliver Anthony's song tapped into, and why it exploded in popularity is the plight of the working class. There's something clearly wrong with the system that we are all operating under. Um, but in typical leftist fashion, uh, they can sometimes uh, identify the problem absolutely never. Not one time. They are batting 0 for 1,000 in terms of identifying a proper solution to that alleged problem. Simply uninterested. And the reason why they can't meme is because, again, Maybe you have to hear the song for yourself. We advise against it. It's terrible in every way. It's rough. Half of the the, the lines don't even rhyme. Um, it's incredibly preachy. Like the reason why Oliver Anthony's song was so important is it wasn't preachy. It's he was flat. just talking about his existence. It's flat. It's He's incredibly flat. flat. He's flat the entire fucking song. Um, and <laughs> it's just, it's terrible. It's, it's, it's a terrible song in every way. So trying to piggyback on the explosive popularity of Oliver Anthony's song, the left, in this case, Dane, Bragg himself, proved once again that the left can't meme. Dane, don't discredit him. He's literally got tens of tens of views on that song that he was trying to grift <laughs> off of. Okay? I know. Don't Listen, hate the player, he, Dane. I think I saw... Hate the game. Uh, most recently on YouTube, it had seven and a half thousand likes. So, you know. He's right there with... Great for him. 
Watch yourself. And YouTube doesn't tell us how many dislikes or thumbs downs you get anymore. And I I would love to see the numbers on that. Well, I'm sure we've gotten a couple in our day. Um, But yeah, I mean, there's there's particular lines that David and and I had discussed previously that that we would like to go into. To give you a little sparky notes. But I mean... It's really, it's really not even worth it. You can. We're also in addition to the video, so that you don't have to listen to that bullshit. We're doing we, a reaction video to it. We're also <laughs> going to um, put in the comments just the lyrics, so you can just read it if you want. And I mean, pretty much every verse is filled with some something inanity, some some leftist talking point inanity. Like, I okay, I'm going to indulge myself. The one I'm going to talk about is is Did he I says a, in verse four. Quote, well, we know your culture wars are there to distract. Your culture wars, Oliver. Not the left who says, hey, black guy, hate that white guy because he's white and oppressing you. Or, hey, poor guy, hate that rich guy because he's rich and oppressing you. Or, hey, woman, hate that man because he's the patriarchy and oppressing you. The, The left never does that. The culture wars are an exclusive creation of the right, according to Bragg. But the second line of, of verse four says, while, libertari- while libertarian billionaires avoid paying tax. Well, that's rich. If there ah, were, I see what you did there. <laughs> if there were a bunch of libertarian billionaires, don't you think libertarian politicians would be a little more successful? Don't you think they'd be throwing money at them to get them elected? Well, who's the one walking around with all the money? Don't you remember? Scrooge McDuck walking around, wah, wah, I'm liberal. Or was that, uh, which one was the... That was that's <laughs> Daffy Duck or Donald? No, that's, that's Donald, Donald Duck. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Daffy, Daffy Duck was Looney Tunes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. got it. You so got yeah. your you got your ducks. I got my ducks all in, in a row. A row. <laughs> Damn it. Anyway, why are we such dad jokes today? Oh, uh, well, I have an excuse. What's yours? I could be a dad. Could be. You just I could be. Yeah. I could be pulling out my illegitimate child out of that sink in no time. Call back to the to the aforementioned. I'm hoping that joke is is not highbrow, but I hope it's implied enough that that you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I'm not going any further. I'm gonna <laughs> sit on this uncomfortable silence as long as you're willing to. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. Anyway, libert- <laughs> Libertil- libertarian billionaires avoid. Like, I can only think of one off the top of my head that actually claims to be libertarian, and that's Peter Thiel. But you know, his actions don't belie what he claims for himself. But none of the other bar- billionaires I've ever heard say I'm libertarian or I have libertarian ideals or anything else like that. So when he's talking about libertarian billionaires not paying tax, I don't know who the fuck he's talking about. I mean, he doesn't either. He doesn't know what he's talking about in most of the song. Right. To be honest, he's just offering like talking points. And that's all they ever do is they all they ever do is offer talking points. Like, well, what's your plan to fix them? (laughs) You need to fix them. Like me, you were just telling me that I was wrong for complaining about the other stuff. And now you're complaining about the fact that I'm complaining and your solution is to join a union. That's your whole that's your solution to everything. In this society, is to join a union. Yeah. Well, shit. Why didn't we think about that, Dane? Because the union won the Civil War. That's why. Don't join the Confederacy, <laughs> you big dummies. Uh, well, f- listen. I'll I'll tell you this much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Is it doesn't matter if a billionaire buys his seventh yacht. That yacht has not made you personally one iota poor. As a matter of fact, him buying that yacht actually made some people richer in terms of the people who work on the yacht, manufacture, all that kind of stuff. He just created jobs. Um, but a billionaire spending his money on things like that doesn't make you poor. Now, what will make you poor is if, yes, a billionaire who cozies up next to politicians and uses their monopoly on force to keep his competitors down so that he can get ill-gotten gains that he otherwise wouldn't have voluntarily got from the free market if there, if competition was allowed to flourish, that's a legitimate problem. And if you identify that and say, yeah, these billionaires or these multinational corporations, you know, that control billions or in the case of BlackRock and Vanguard, control the flow of trillions of dollars, you know, are cozying up to their government buddies. That is a obvious problem. And if you want to call that out, go for it. You are on the money. 
But if you're not making any fine distinctions between person A who made a lot of money because he provided a good or service that a lot of people found value in and billionaire or rich person B who got it because he got a bunch of special favors from his politics buddies, then you're never going to fix the problem. And using unionizing is never going to solve anything. And to say that Oliver Anthony is missing the point or he's punching down on other working class because he has that line about 300 pounds and paying for your, bog, your bag of fudge rounds is to say that he's doing that instead of what is the title of the song? Rich men north of Richmond, Washington, D.C., politicians, bureaucrats, the people that possess the monopoly on violence to be able to actually impact your life. Jeff Bezos' seventh yacht, not doing anything to you. But when the government takes 30% of everything you earn and goes and blows it in Ukraine or hands it out to their buddies in terms of subsidies that they didn't earn, that actually impacts you. Bezos' yacht didn't. So with all due disrespect, Mr. Bragg, shut the fuck up. Well, you know, Dane, Billy Mays is probably going to be pretty happy about this <laughs> next topic that we're going to discuss. Billy because Mays I think alive? I think he's dead. He's super dead, Dane. <laughs> he's been dead for a while, almost a decade. <laughs> I hate to break this news. Are you Listen, okay? Everything, can, you, can you go on? All my years run together. I had if a nice you told me he died 10 minutes nice ago or 10 years ago, I could tell you. Oh, shit, you sorry. You just shit all over it. Can, I, can I take it back from yep. the top? Take it from the top. All right, well, Billy Mays is going to be pretty happy with this next segment because I'm pretty sure a couple of millionaires became broke over this next thing, and that's the Blue Beetle. And I believe their tenets were, if you don't go watch this movie, or their stance was, if you don't watch our movie, it's because you're racist and you don't support the Hispanic culture? Is that what I'm supposed to, is that kind of around sort of what they said? That's what's heavily implied, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Like I said, I wish I would have known that tactic back in about second, third, fourth, <laughs> fifth grade. Just the old boing flip. You can't give me an F because if you give me an F, the terrorists win. God damn it. You do this every time, David. David, 4.0. My report card, report card would have been Not going stellar. to Harvard because he doesn't have the right shade of skin. Well, maybe now. No, well, when they back put when those, we were doing put it. Put those no. racist little blockers in. We got too many Chinese people here. We got to keep them out. <laughs> I got an idea. Um, so anyway, we have a, I don't, is this a tweet? I don't remember if it was a tweet or if it was uh, just sharing a, a little snippet of an article, but it was shared by a DC Films account. And if you don't know, Blue Beetle is one of the DC superheroes. And um, <sighs> this DC film account, and I'm just going to read the whole thing because it's two short paragraphs, but this is basically their their argument or, or what they're saying. And this was before the release of Blue Beetle, which was a week ago today. What is today? The 25th? Fifth. So whatever, seven days ago, the 18th of August is when Blue Beetle came out. And so this was just a couple of days before that. And the DC Films account had this to say, quote, tracking for a $30 million domestic debut, people in the Hollywood industry fear Blue Beetle will not get a cultural moment as much as Marvel Studios Black Panther films and Shang-Chi uh, Shang and The Legend of Ten Rings. If, Jesus, it, it, if it flops, it... it do they or they have really poor writing. Okay, I'm, I'm inserting words to make it sound better. If it flops, it could lead to fewer projects getting made with Latino representation. Latinos, who make up 19% of the U.S. population, still underrepresented on screen. They represented 55.1% of lead roles and 4.5% of co-leads in films, according to a 2023 study study by the Latino Donor Collaborative. So the argument there is, if you, average consume, movie consuming population, if you choose not to go watch Blue Beetle, uh, it's probably your fault, first of all, that you didn't go watch it. Um, might be racist it, of you uh, actually, to not it is go actually, watch it. It is actually my fault because I willfully chose not to watch that piece of shit. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, okay. But I mean, L hold on. Yes, you are correct. Although, next step in the mental in there, gymnastics right, analysis, right, yes. by you not watching, it is correct. your fault that Latino actors are not given as many roles in starring and co-starring roles. So now they have to execute one of the people because it in, flopped. in the cages. 
right? Yeah. They're playing hardball now. Right. They're going to start executing the kids that are in the cages at the border yeah. for every day that it doesn't reach 30 million. And now listen, the fact that it flops is completely your fault. It's not, it's not the writer's fault. It's not the studio. It's not anybody that was involved in the creative it's production the of the movie. the fact you named it the blue fucking beetle. Like, it's literally a car. You named it after a <laughs> shitty car that you wouldn't be caught dead driving in front of your friend. I mean, this is a comic character, though, no? I don't, I don't think this is a new one. It's not one of the, it's not one of the main ones. I, this is the first I've ever heard about it. It's usually just like the seven. Mm. Like, the Justice League is pretty much it. Wow. From our, or DC, excuse me. Yeah. I believe. You're right. I've never seen it in the Justice League. But after you, uh, after you get going on, on a riff, I will sit over here and look up to see if, if there's any pre-history to this movie of Blue Beetle. But is it even worth riffing on? Could be. Um, here's what I'll tell you is my decision for not going to watch it. In addition to the fact that just generally I don't like I haven't seen most of the Avenger movies. Uh, I'm just not a big superhero movie guy, but that that's just me. Um, I saw a trailer for Blue Beetle and I forget the exact line, but, uh, George Lopez either plays the dad or some sort of family member of the character that, that plays the Blue Beetle. And somebody mentions Batman to him. And his line is some, something to the effect of, you know, screw Batman or Batman, you know, something bad. Batman is a fascist is what George Lopez's line is. And obviously in today's, uh, room temperature IQ society, everything is racist, everything is fascist, everything is bigotry, everything is any of these scare words. So the words have no meaning anymore, except for when somebody uses those words unironically, you know, not historically talking about fascism, they're signaling to you that they are of the woke variety. You immediately know what all of their opinions are on an entire range of subjects because they refuse to think for themselves and they just regurgitate words that have no meaning. So when I saw that line, my immediate thought was, this is just gonna be more woke nonsense bullshit. And even if I did go sit through it, if I was a superhero movie aficionado, I would just be preached to for two hours. And I don't wanna do that. So I'm not going to go watch this bullshit, let alone I'm not going to throw my hard-earned dollars behind something that I fundamentally don't believe in. So that's me, and I bet that's a lot of people that don't want to go watch these movies that have shitty writing and shitty acting and shitty everything else. But no, it's, it's racism, and, and, and it's all your fault for why you don't want to go. So that's why you knew that I was going to take a little riffage over here it's because you knew that you're about to drop this atom bomb about some unknown character coming up a boy real strong real strong over here yeah and calling batman a fascist number one the wayne charity alone outputs millions of dollars to those in need the orphanage that he helped support granted he fell on hard times in a couple of the batmans and they had to shut down the orphanage but then they brought it back it's fine it's fine he does a lot of philanthropy not to mention all the very rain-soaked women, various rain-soaked rain women that he lets into his house on a dark and stormy night. You know, he's he's really a man for the people. Granted, if you cross the line, he's going to beat the living shit out of you. But I think the only thing that really makes him fascist is the simple fact that he's rich. A playboy persona. But I can tell you that's probably exactly all that line is based on. He probably, made a bunch of money, you know so he's he a probably fascist. Voted for Trump. We can't root for we can't root for Batman anymore. He voted for Trump twice. He voted twice for Trump. Oh my God, it it gets sad. And here's a little tip for Hollywood: if they want to get any any further, you guys should know this about kissing the ring and sucking people's assholes over there. Uh, you don't become the new kid on the block and then piss off all the old guard. If you want to work in Hollywood, you don't do a movie with Tom Cruise and go, "That guy was a dick." because you're never going to work in Hollywood anymore. It's the old line. If you piss off Johnny, you don't do the Tonight Show. And it's straight that. So maybe instead of insulting everything that came before you with a lack of, like uh, the Snow White chick, what's her name again? Oh, um, she. I believe she's Latina too. Something so if Zegler, I don't go watch Rachel that bullshit, Zegler am I racist again? Pretty much. Oh, that's good. Well, she came out and she was hating on the old story. Oh, he was, he was creeping on her. It's gross. <laughs> it, like, it, okay. 
not even not even going to go into it. Not even getting pissed off about it. We almost talked about it last week. I held, I bit my tongue. But when you keep shitting on the old stuff, you doth protest too loudly, and then it carries over into this, where into actual reality and society that we have to hate our history because you know we owned slaves once, like. And then we all have to be held accountable for the fact that they were different times. So I have to be made guilty and Dane has to be made guilty. And we can't move on from 200 years ago, even though things are coming at us quick, fast, and in a hurry nowadays. We got to stop everything because there was racism once. Yeah. God damn it. We have to shit on the old guard. We have to, dis- we have to disavow ourselves instead of learning from the mistakes of our past, but then also adhering to the past because if it weren't for that, we wouldn't be here today and appreciating the past. We have to just shit all over and act like it never happened, right? That's a good way to move forward. That's pretty That's pretty mature. Super productive. Yeah. Great Definitely get, doesn't put us at each other's throats for no damn reason. Great way to get, great way to stay in shape. Yeah. Um, but just so anybody knows or cares, um, Blue Beetle has been a part of DC Comics since 1939. 1939? His first appearance was in the Mystery Men comics, issue number one. Um, and the current... Blue Beetle, Jamie Reyes, or Jaime Reyes, however you want to pronounce his name, a uh, teenager from El Paso, that's who the movie's based on, is the third person to be the Blue Beetle. The original Blue Beetle, Blue Beetle was an archaeologist named Dan Garrett, <laughs> and then he was followed by... You have created a new superhero, Dan, the what? Blue Beater. <laughs> Don't ask me what his superpower and is. He was succeeded by Ted Cord, and then now it's Jamie Reyes. Ted Lasso? So, anyway... Apparently, like alien technology, super suit, all that kind of stuff. That's what it is. But anyway, so yes, no, this is not a brand new creation just for this movie. It's been around for a long time. Um, but yeah, you're racist if you didn't watch it because the new because the current Blue Beetle is well. That's a not a good look because if, it, if he was written into the comic books, and granted, I'm no Stephen Smith or any or Stephen Smith. No, no. Uh, God damn it, James Silent Bob. Mm-hmm. Kevin Smith, sorry. Jesus Christ. Stephen A. Smith is a piece of shit. Kevin Smith is pretty cool. Um, I'm no comic book fan, so don't hate on me. I, did, I didn't you know, come from that background, so forgive me for not knowing about Blue Beetle, but I wouldn't, if I wanted to make a blockbuster, a summer blockbuster, I probably wouldn't have led with the superhero that a lot of people haven't heard of yet. Uh, I mean, Just an idea. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know the whole catalog of DC superheroes. Maybe this is the only Latino DC superhero, and so that's obviously why they did it is for more representation and all that kind of stuff, which again, fine, as far as that goes. Just don't write shitty fucking stuff. Make a good movie. We'll go watch it. Make a good movie and don't fucking preach at us for two hours, and maybe people might want to watch it. Maybe people will be like, oh, that's a pretty cool character. Maybe I want to see some more movies. Maybe they go to movies to get away from fucking reality. Yeah. And don't want to talk about how many genders there are or how woke they have to be tomorrow to be able to be accepted by you. Yeah. Just a thought, a Just, careless thought. You know. But, you know, listen, I'm this works out for everybody in life all the time. I've I've come I've come to see this a lot. When you refuse to take personal accountability and just always blame everybody else for whatever it is you do, whether it's, you know, drink and drive or whether you just write really shitty movies or anything else in between, it's always best to blame other people and then never fix what it was that made it tank in the first place in terms of this movie. And then that's how you, that's how you make good movies in the future. That's, seems, that's the takeaway that I'm getting from all seems this. Seems to be working for Hunter just fine. Yeah. So... Live so. like Hunter. We should all be like Hunter Biden. What yeah. would Hunter do? It works for you if you're a rich man north of Richmond, or at least you're related to one. Huh, nice callback. So, all right. Well, now that we've been sufficiently blue beetled, <laughs> Epstein didn't kill himself. Maui's on fire, and the government's here to help, finally. Yeah, it's that old uh, Ronald Reagan quote, one of the scariest... Uh, uh, sentences in the English language is, is hello, I'm from the government, I'm here to help. Um, what we're talking about today is a little bit more of the, the Maui fires, but not about the fires themselves or how they might have been caused or who might have been interested in having them caused, as we did last week on episode one. We don't have any tinfoil here today. We're fresh out. This time, we are talking about the government never letting a disaster go to waste in terms of either getting what it wants 
or in terms of, you know, kind of rhetorically shouting down anybody who objects to the stupid shit that it always wants. Well, it's our, it's our rich American heritage that we keep throwing away is that they take the they take the uh, the practices of the people that lived here before us, the Indians, and they use every piece of that animal, that animal being the travesty and death and suffering of the American people, and using it every little piece, the bone, the sinew, the this to make that. You know, they'd make their teepees out of the yeah. skins or the, you know, moccasins. That's what, that's just what they're doing here, Dane. They're making the best out of a bad situation by not helping the people that got really fucked over and helping themselves to all the profits that lay that laying waste to this land offered to them right because everybody knows that that group of parasites in dc just don't have enough the fact that they can forcibly take half of your income from you and uh but dang. enrich themselves it's never enough they need to make up excuses for why they need to take more their private jet doesn't even have 12 seats sure. how are they supposed to get there with this piece of shit jet that only has eight seats it doesn't even shame. have a centerpiece there's no table. How, do, how am I supposed to do coke and have sex with underage children? Jesus, David. On my plane that only has eight <laughs> seats. On their way to Epstein Island, right? That's the idea. <laughs> Thank you, Dane. In this very clippable moment. Good Lord. I feel like you can't just rip the Band-Aid off of that kind of stuff. <laughs> like, yes, we know they do it. Hey, hey. You said something dark right there, all right? <laughs> Need you to back up? <laughs> Take a couple steps. You're killing me. Um, all right, so how did the government take the Maui situation and somehow find a way to make it even worse? Um, we're going to put in the, the, the uh, comments, the show notes down under this, this episode, a link to the X account of Professor Peter St. Ange. And uh, it, his, uh, his Twitter handle, for those of you at home, is at Prof St. Ange, P-R-O-F-S-T-O-N-G-E. And what um, Professor St. Ange is talking about in this roughly three and a half minute clip is, well, not all of it, but part of what he's talking about is how the DC Cretans are using Maui to get more money to Ukraine. And I know you're sitting there at home thinking, how in the hell are those two things related? And the Epstein moment here is, remember that roughly $8 trillion of COVID relief that they just had to pass, you know, and uh, anybody who objected, there was one person in all of Capitol Hill, Thomas Massey, uh, objected to that and held it up for as long as he could, but they passed it anyway. Um, how the hell was all these things? things like David's favorite story of all time, uh, orange groves in Chicago. Uh, how the hell did that make it into the COVID relief package? And here's how those pieces of shit up in DC operate. If you are an objector, as few as there might be, again, Thomas Massey, the lone standing objector to the COVID relief, they can't allow a single dissenting voice when they want money to go to their cronies. So what do they do? They By the way, we mentioned this bill. before. We mentioned this, that well, they do this shit all. Epstein. Right. right. We've said this before. They do this constantly. <laughs> is they put forward a bill and they put in funding in that bill for whatever it is they want. In this case, they say, we're going to give $24 billion more to Ukraine because they don't have enough. But the title of the bill says... but. People have been objecting, and the American people seem to be objecting in terms of the candidates they're supporting to more money going to Ukraine. So that's not very politically popular. And so what do they do? They say, oh, guess what we're also going to put in this bill? We're going to put in $12 billion of relief for Maui. And by the way, they're going to name the bill the Maui Relief Bill. Yeah. And what's going to happen, Dane? I'm going to, I'm going to cut in here. I'm going to take a shot in the dark, and I'm going to say that they named the bill the Maui relief bill, they're going to give a pittance, maybe a million, like a low teen million to Hawaii. And then anyone that doesn't vote yes on that bill, they'll just say that they voted against helping Hawaii when really they were voting against sending $26 billion to 
Ukraine. Am yeah, I well, anywhere? Am I anywhere? Of course, that's that's the political ploy. Fuck. That's exactly that's exactly the point. So, and and then they're just going to run their victory laps on MSNBC and CNN and even Fox News because yes, as we have told you many times on this podcast before, all bipartisanship means is that the two parties are just joining together to hold hands as they fuck you. Um, is uh in their eight sheet plan. That's exactly what it is. So if you have say, for example, a Thomas Massey or a Rand Paul in the Senate or someone along those lines who objects to the fiscal irresponsibility that goes on in D.C. And they say, I don't think we should be sending $24 billion more to Ukraine. Well, they're going to just run their victory laps on all their mainstream media and say, this guy voted against sending money to Maui. How terrible is he? Republicans must hate the people. Um, I mean, it's so pathetically transparent that it's, it's not even... But- I don't even know why they keep, well, I know why they keep trying it because they keep getting away with it because nobody holds their feet to the fire, pun intended. Um, but it's just, it insults our intelligence for them to continue doing it. That's, I guess that's really what but rubs that's me the, the most that it keeps it. working though. It's like if in football, you run the ball straight up the gut and they can't stop it. And then you call pass play the next Pete Carroll just stupid son of a bitch. Anyway, and you run a pass play when you know you've been shoving it down their throat, that's on you. If you get it picked off in the end zone and Brady gets his fucking throat. Anyway, so why would they change any of their strategy when it works all the time? But again, when these people that go to CNN and Fox News and think that it's absolutely true, you're not being told facts. You're being told what to think. And then what these people will say is they'll just take it at, well, that guy must just be a piece of shit because he doesn't view the world as I did it and he voted down this bill. I I really don't like him. Yeah. And then their guy looks like a saint. The other guy looks like the devil. And then they won't listen to it. Well, how could I listen to that side when they won't even support the people that happened, that a tragedy happened to? Yeah. Well, and you Let's know- Let's not think any any higher than just baseline. I think Thomas Massey himself, and I maybe other- representatives throughout the years have have put forward this because the House and the Senate write their own rules in terms of procedure. So if they want to write a rule that says, and Thomas Massey has put this forward before, that says single issue bills, you are not allowed to bring the bill to the floor for a vote unless that bill only pertains to one issue. So everybody knows what they're voting on. You can't have one of these om- you can't have one of these omnibus <laughs> bills that has 47 different unrelated issues in it and you have to vote on the entire package because you might think issues 1 through 24 aren't that good 25 26 and 27 are and then 28 through 42 aren't that good and maybe you like 43 44 and 45 that that is no way to run and and if you wonder how the hell did we wind up 33 trillion dollars in debt this is exactly how it happens because everybody sticks in their little piece and then if you don't vote for whatever the big ticket item is in this case funding for maui then you are you automatically hate the the american people and the last point i wanted to make on this comment is this goes out to all you democracy is is sacred folks because like david was pointing out why would they change it if it keeps working and i would suggest to you it's not really working if we look at the popularity of congress vis-a-vis the american people always having a rating you know in the single digits in terms of uh, uh, favorability. So how do they keep getting elected when they do this shit blatantly and openly to your face? I suggest to you because the voting doesn't matter because it's either explicitly rigged or it's so far outside the realm of, of being anything that's a fair, legitimate democratic competition for who has the best policies and who actually serves the interests of the American people the best. Those people aren't getting elected. So... The system is broken. It's rigged very clearly. So when you, you know, breast, you know, uh, beat your chest and wail and gnash your teeth about how sacred democracy is and we can't let it go, this is the system you're fighting for. But you're fighting for these people to stay in power forever. I mean, I hope you feel good about yourself because it's getting the rest of us nowhere. That's well. That's the thing too. Is like they they're so fervently defending democracy, yet they don't even ask a simple question. How they'll they'll say he didn't vote for Maui or he didn't vote for this, but they 
more often than not, won't even be able to tell you how much was going to go to Maui or how much was going to go to Ukraine. They probably won't even know that the Ukrainian bill is even in there because they won't mention it on, uh, what is it, Uh, legacy media is what they're calling it nowadays. And uh, it's just, you got to try a little bit. If you're going to defend democracy and you're going to shout down people for voting for the wrong guy in your eyes, that's going to eviscerate democracy and be the next coming of Hitler or whatever the fuck you want to call him, then maybe know what you're arguing for a little bit deeper than, well, CNN said it, so uh, that's that's must be true. Or Fox said it, must be true. Or MS, the worst of them all, MSNBC must be true. Like, yeah. dude, you, you can't, what's, there was a comedian one time that had a lawyer for a father, and he said to his son, what's your opinion on this? And he stated, and he said, the father walked out, or no, the father said, you have five minutes to come up with the rebuttal from the other side, otherwise you are not entitled to that opinion. What a fucking concept. That you have to know the viewpoints of the other side to make your viewpoint better. Huh. What a concept. Actually yeah. trying. Actually challenging yourself every now and again. But yeah. then again, there's a lot of people that don't like to challenge themselves, their ideals, their politics. Their, they don't even need reality anymore. So what am I? What am I? Yeah. Hmm arguing about. I mean, that's definitely true on the individual level and on the macro political level, there is no need to challenge ideals because again, the elections You're don't get matter. Backstretch. This is like, uh, what was that? What was that show with, um, Drew Carey and all whose line is it anyway? Yeah. Or like where the rules are made up and the, the points, points don't, don't matter. matter. Yeah. That's exactly what voting is. All the rules are made up and your votes don't matter. They're going to get into office whoever they want to get to make sure that the gravy train keeps rolling and you are the gravy train. You are the pro- you go out and earn your dollar so that they can take a third of it and spend it however they want and all your protest protestations to the contrary ain't going to make a damn bit of difference. You know what we need? A fucking union. <laughs> That would that would that show, would show them. Them. <laughs> that, Nothing could stop us. Yeah. It's like the Transmorphers <laughs> or the Galaxy Rangers or whatever. Galaxy the fuck we're Rangers, about. Yeah. <laughs> the unstoppable force. Well, Dane, it, it, have you have we sufficiently? Epstein did kill himself. Yeah. Okay. He did. He did not. Kill himself. He didn't not do the thing that he didn't not do. Yeah. Good. All right. So the main topic. And it's a good one. Chris Christie, he's out here. <laughs> he's out here. <laughs> Look, Look, he up out of here. Looking like he's been using, using way too many tax dollars to buy his bag of fund Maybe rounds. we need to form a GoFundMe for his Ozempic prescription. <laughs> Jesus, titties. Um, Speaking and, of, let's get into his titties. Yeah. Um, what we're talking uh, today in the main is just general tone deafness of Can our we just over, body shame overlords. him, by the way? Are we going to get canceled for body shaming? That's not going to get us I will body shame this shit. See, here's the thing. On this podcast, I've always tried to make it a point to never punch down. But, wait, no, this isn't a but. This is... We, we are not punching, punching down. down. He has more power. This than is a guy who was a former not attorney make, general, former only, governor of a state, the only multiple times down is if it's a seesaw candidate. scenario. And there's no way that both of us <laughs> on one side of that seesaw is going to lift his ass up to punch up at him. That's Never. the only scenario that he's <laughs> definitely below us. Is uh, Christie had a comment during the debate, and like I said, we're recording this August 25th. So the debate was what was it last night or the night before? Night anyway, before. a day or two ago. Um, the first GOP presidential debate, and he was talking to Vivek Ramaswamy, and he had a rather illuminating quote. For him, it was probably just a you know rambling throwaway line that it didn't matter to him. But to to those of us that are paying attention, the fact that he would even say this is really just indicative of how tone deaf these people are. And I was I was looking for words. I was like, how. What word describes the level of tone deafness you have to be to, to, to make this statement? And I mean, obtuse was the only word I could come up with, but like, even that's not strong enough. Acute? No, just obtuse. Um, Cost? Because hand. <laughs> the reason why the vast majority of the American people and really people all around the world to their own respective government bureaucrats and politicians, the reason why they're so universally hated 
is because they always put their own interests above everybody else. Remember that analogy that a really brilliant, um, devilishly handsome co-host came up with a long time ago about a a certain plane being at 35,000 feet? Yeah. And you don't even see the humans from up there? Yeah. There's another scenario. Yeah. They're so like they're so removed from what we are that they can't even think they can't even pretend to think the way that we do anymore. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Is it accidental or is it intentional? And as I asked that I question, think it's I think it's unintentional. I really don't yeah. I don't think it well, it's it's not just that they don't remember what it's like. It's that they don't remember and they don't care to find out. You yeah. remember like to get because to your point from the last segment, why would they need to find out? It's working just right, fine. Right. The, they the, keep holding power. They keep is getting rich. Well oiled and well manufactured. Right. And it's chugging along. Granted, it's destroying everything else in its path, i.e., us and yeah. our country. But their shit works supremely well. Yeah. So so it's it's occurring to me now that I still haven't said the quote because again, just getting off on my 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 tizzies here. So anyway, here's what Chris Christie had to say to Vivek Ramaswamy during the debate. He said, quote, you've oh, and by the way, he's doing this to attack Vivek. He thinks that he's like making some great point saying that this is why you're not fit to be on this stage or running for president, blah, blah, blah. He really thinks he's making a, a great point, but we, he what he's really I mean, you would think he's on Vivek's team with this statement. But anyway, here's what he says. Quote, you've never done anything to try to advance the interests of this government except to put yourself forward as a candidate tonight. I did it as a U.S. attorney. I did it as governor. And I am not going to bow to anyone. Except for all the dicks you had to suck to get to those positions. Exactly. And all the donors that are funding your worthless less than 1% uh, campaign in terms of your popularity. Hey, can uh, we get to that too? Yeah, you'll bow to them, but the not the American people who you're supposed to be serving. Clearly, because he's got some big old nuts to go with that belly. If he's standing up on that candidate poll or that dais thinking that he even has a, a, a snowball's chance in hell of getting elected. He's been in how many of these presidential bids? Like I mean, three? Uh, I think maybe sixteen three. was his first one. I don't. Obviously, he didn't run in twenty because there wasn't any GOP. But I think sixteen and now are his only two. Because before that, he was governor I of New Jersey. Sworn he's been in it to win it a couple of times. Sixteen and now. I mean, if you get turned down, well, if you get but turned like I said, down he once, was governor of New Jersey before that, and he didn't run while he was good. Well, I don't know if he was, was acting governor. It doesn't matter. Point is... We don't like you. Yeah. Point <laughs> is, Stop that coming first out. part of the sentence that says, you've never done anything to try to advance the interests of this government. Chris. That's a huge star. Chris, my brother in Christ. That's the whole fucking point <laughs> the reason why we hate you people is because all you ever do is put the interests of the government over the people that the government is supposed to be serving that's the point because why do you do that because the interests of the government is just a proxy for your interests. If you enrich the government and you give the government more power, which you get to control, and you get to hand out to more of your buddies so that they can funnel some of it back to you, then you enrich yourselves. Your interests come first. Your crony buddies' interests come first. And the American people, the people who you're supposed to be serving, always come last. And so that's why this is such a Freudian slip of such monumental magnitude. You've never done anything to try to advance the interests of this government. If he wasn't a completely captured, parasitic government piece of shit, his statement would have said, you've never done anything to try to advance the interests of the American people. And then he would say, and here's how you do it, using the levers of power of government and da 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 But that's not what he said. He said what naturally came to him, the interests of the government. That's what Chris Christie does. That's what he's all about because the interests of government are just a proxy for his and his crony buddy's interest. Period. Full stop. 
And I wish Vivek would have pointed that out, but you know, it's tough. You're in the moment. Vivek was getting hit from a lot of different sides, but that's really, that. that's it. That's the whole thing. And how these people like Chris Christie continue to f- either fail or refuse to see that this is exactly why we hate them so much, I'll never understand. Well, again, they don't care to find out. And there's no incentive for them to do so. Nope. Well, and then again, I, I, I won't go off on too much of a tangent, but I'm just so tired of how things are covered too nowadays. If I can have my own say on the debate, I For saw sure. I saw highlights and stuff, and you can always tell what legacy media, the government, the establishment, whatever you want to call it, the deep state, who they want to win and who they don't want to win. I posit to you RFK. They didn't give a fuck about RFK for however long he's been in this, you know, you know, existence ecosystem of the government and however long he's been doing his thing until he decided that he was going to be a candidate or he might try to run. And then all of a sudden his podcast that he's done before have been demonetized, deplatformed and given strikes to people that are on. Um, and then it comes out that he's a, conspiracy theorist and he's a kook and he's a you know a vaccine denier and all this stuff it's like you doth protest too loudly and uh, just a fun little exercise for our viewers just the next time because after this debate they came out and said ramaswamy Mm -hmm. was uh it, they, they started besmirching him they were saying that he was like too too mechanical he talked well but he's too young he doesn't have the experience like they're already starting to shit on i forgot what they're actually trying to say i mean they were before but yeah definitely after the bait they're they're turning up because he won it that's why exactly so they're scared of that they don't want him to be an actual person that they have to worry about because you know the chris christie's have paid their dues they're bought and paid for he might as well have all of his donors on his jacket, I like Robin Williams had a great point. I think that we can, if we're going to allow for the corporatization and money and lobbying in D.C., then we have to make a law so that every time you put on your suit, it says Pfizer right here, BlackRock right here, Vanguard all the way across your back. Like it, it should be a bigger patch for how much they give you. I think yeah, we should like start NASCAR. implementing that. exactly, yeah. or like you know what they do in European football, right? Just like they say. So like so that we know. Oh, that's why he thinks that we need 27 this, that, or the other because he's getting paid to say that. Right. It would make our job a little bit easier as Americans, but that's that's neither here nor there. But the exercise that I was going to say is just note when they start besmirching somebody or start attacking somebody's you know character, they stop talking about the issues. It's because they just want you to write them off and not think about them anymore because those are usually the people that are speaking truth to power and that's kind of what we're all about on this podcast. So I'm with RFK, granted not on all of his stuff, but I think on the whole, he makes a lot of sense. And to just defend him one more time on this podcast, if there was ever somebody that should be a conspiracy theorist, it should be the guy that watched his uncle get his fucking brains blown out on live on TV by the CIA and then watched his dad get assassinated by who knows another three named character, I would be pretty fucking on my toes too if I was a, if I had Kennedy on my back and saw that shit when I was a very small child. So, you know, just do your own research. Look at Vivek. Look at what he does. Form your own conclusions. Don't let him tell you what you think. Yeah, I mean, if this world had any sanity left, you know, for the democracy, for the democracy a sacred crowd, if democracy meant anything, then the... Uh, general election would be RFK versus Ramaswamy. That, Why not? I mean, again, if you were actually after people who had a grasp of the issues, who explained why they had their positions and not just, oh, because the other guys are bad and all of that kind of bullshit. Um, if it was truly a, all right, who's got the best ideas to move this country forward, to bring us together to any extent that can be done, to quit wasting our money on boondoggles, uh, you know, all around the world being the the world police and and handing out uh, money to all their friends. 
You know, if that was truly what the race was about, there's your two candidates, you know, see the world very differently on a lot of important issues and then let the, let the chips fall where they may not, you know, two octogenarians going at each other that uh, don't have any idea what they're talking about and just are slinging mud back and forth at each other. Uh, or, you know, any of the number, like David was saying, kept people that are, you know, uh, Ramaswamy had a funny uh, little quip to um, Nikki Haley. <laughs> and he said during during the debate, he said, I wish you well on your future uh, board positions at uh, at Raytheon and, and, and uh, Lockheed Martin and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, again, that's just a funny little thing that that I saw. But anyway, uh, yeah, if this world had any sanity left, it would be Ramaswamy and, and RFK would be the two options, again, in a two-party system. Um, but that's not the way it is. That's not the way it's going to be. And look no forward than your, you know, local legacy media channel to show you exactly that they are going to pick for you who your candidates are. And it's not going to be anybody that has anything good to say about you or the future of this country. And then they'll tell you that you did a good job voting in their candidate that they made you vote for. Yeah. And then you can feel good and you yeah. save democracy. Yeah. Funny thing about democracy is it's not all about your side winning. It's about the right side winning. Yeah. The one that has the majority. Right. But that doesn't seem to happen anymore. Yeah. Does it? No. I, I seriously <laughs> think this next election, they're just going to be like, well... Biden lost the election, but, you know, we're just going to give it to him anyway because, like, we are trying to support minorities in this country. So we need to start giving, like, the winner's trophies to the people that don't win so that they feel respected. And it's equal for them, too. You heard Equity. it here first. Equity. <laughs> anyway. Tomorrow's news today. In this WB mad, podcast. mad world, Dane, where can they find this one last bastion of sanity? You can find this episode at wmdpodcast.com backslash 160. They can get the audio only on any podcast catcher. Just search Weapons of Meme Destruction. They can get the video on YouTube, Rumble, and Odyssey. They can link up with us on Twitter, Instagram, or sorry, X, Instagram, TikTok. They still call it Twitter. They still say tweeting. Uh, private members only Facebook page at $5 a month or more of support. Members Just go to wmdpodcast.com, support our work tab to figure out how to do that. While you're there, jump Local on the signals. email list on the homepage um, and uh, to always stay in, in contact with the show. And um, also, text, name, number, David's... What Who you, is your daddy what, and what does he do? What you think David's hair care routine is. Uh, text any of those things to the uh, automated text service, 610-596-WMDP, 610-596-9637. Uh, that's when you'll get real-time updates for the show. You'll get a text that says, hey, show's going live on whatever your favorite platform is uh, right when it's happening so you don't miss uh, out on one second of your life being in, further enriched by WMD Podcast. And uh, yeah, just a great way to stay in touch with the show. So with that being said, we will see you next week on 161. Great way to stay in shape. It is. All right. Well, with all that being said, guys, little memes, stay safe. But more importantly, stay free. <laughs>